Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play Along the Edge. When we left off last time, we learned what the, the tower contained. We went in there. It's got a whole just treasure trove of knowledge in it. A lot of books from a bunch of the cultures in the area that were subsumed by the influx of Christianity. Which, the more I think about this, the more it's really weighing heavily on my mind. This is the kind of thing that, like, if I in real life ever stumbled across such a find, I would be really excited, but I would also kind of be terrified. Like. This is a major historical find. This is important. This is part of people's stories, their histories. I would be looking to contact a reputable institution in my area, or not necessarily even my area, just somebody, like some kind of prestigious college or something, and say, you know, I have this stuff. Can you hook me up with a professional in whatever department handles this? I don't know, history, archaeology, something, and have someone who can actually properly care for all of the the scrolls and the books come and take a look at it and ideally preserve it. At the very least, copies need to be made of this stuff. Like, I'm terrified. What if something happens? What if, like, a fire start somehow catches in the tower and all of this information is lost forever? It would be horrible. That would be just such a terrible thing to have happen. So, I'm ner I really hope... I really hope that Daphne does something to preserve this knowledge. Not just keep it to her own family and be a caretaker of it while it like slowly rots in the, co the tower or whatever, but you know, actually talk to someone who knows how to properly preserve this stuff and make it available for studies so that people can share the information, you know? Cultural heritage, this kind of thing's important. It's a peek into what life was like before things are now. Alright, let's get into January. That's enough of me rambling, but it's a subject that is kind of near and dear to me. Alright, January. Then classes started again. Oh, winter break's over. I grudgingly go back to school. On one hand, practicing mathematics reassures me a lot against the eeriness of the village. It also helps me take Yves Malter out of my mind. But on the other hand, I have the feeling I'm not at 100% of my capacities with this job, which consists mainly in instilling easy-beasy theorems into children who have a hard time following my reasoning. Okay, so perhaps she's not well suited to teaching children? She could look at being perhaps a college teacher, like an adjunct professor or something, though. Or maybe if she taught high schoolers. When I see Mr. Mueller, the inspector, coming to see me on a Friday afternoon, and he takes me aside to have a talk, I'm a bit worried. All the more since my contract is about to end. All right, let's see what he says. I'm quite surprised when, instead of giving me a dressing down, he congratulates me for having righted the ship brilliantly and tells me he thinks he found in me an unexploited potential. Really? Seeing my brilliant university degrees, the fact that I'm completely overtrained for the job was a revelation for him. Oh, but so is he going to maybe offer us a better job? more suited to our capabilities? He offered me a promotion. It seems the local education authority has been blaming Mr. Chastanet for his inertia and lack of leadership for several years, and they asked if I would be interested in taking over the direction of the school. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. No, I agree with them. I complained about Mr. Chastanet before. So, yeah. Yeah, he's not really doing it. There is a lot of inertia and lack of leadership, and yeah. Oh, absolutely. Of course, I'd have to undergo some training and bide my time with my students until then. That's fine. We can do that. This is this is an excellent opportunity, Daphne. Thus, when I'm asked to the director's office a couple of days later, I have somewhat of an idea as to what we're about to talk about. The room is poorly lit. I can make out the silhouette of the director, slumped behind his desk, and look at his ties loose, buttons undone. He watches me enter with a gloomy look. Well... You needed to do a better job, buddy. Sorry. Hello, miss. Take a seat, if you please. Mr. Chastanet. As I'm sitting down, he rummages around in a drawer and finds a bottle of spirit and two glasses. Want a little one? D dude, this is not professional. Okay, things are going badly, but you kind of have your fault, your own self to blame. And it's kind of unprofessional and sloppy to be drinking at school, so no. No, thank you. Don't worry. It will stay between us. No. You're basically, you're telling me that I'm not going to tell anybody that you were drinking on the job, and that's not an assumption you get to make. Or no, he's saying that if I had a drink, he wouldn't tell anybody. No. 
Ignoring my refusal, I know I totally misinterpreted that for a second, but I figured it out. He pours me a dice, pours himself a large swig, drinks it in a gulp, and serves himself another one. But really, he should be worried about me telling other people, because, man. Although, I guess if he's already given up and he knows he's on the way out anyhow, maybe he just doesn't care at this point. I believe you've seen Mr. Mueller? I have. Well, yes. Don't play the innocent. I know what's going on. I have my sources at the local education office. Hmm. Are you performing poorly? Like maybe you're not a good fit for the job? Well, work harder and right your wrongs, then. Yes, I'm feeling spiteful about that conversation we had with him before. I do want to take a moment to say, I really, I quite enjoy the art style here. I've played a lot of visual novels. It seems like it's a thing that maybe started like in Japan, and so you have your lot of kind of anime style artwork, which is okay. I don't have a problem with that, but you know, you tend to see just a whole lot of that over and over, and sometimes you want a little variety. So it's really nice to see something that's got different style of artwork. You know, there was also um, another one that I played a bit ago, uh, Leviathan, The Last Day of the Decade, and that had a different art style as well. So I really like seeing all different kinds of art styles in this sort of format, and I hope to continue to see more of that. It's pretty cool. Anyhow. 30 years on the job. 30 years of loyal duty. But it's not just about loyal duty. You're in charge of children's education. You have to do your job well. It's not just doing the same thing over and over, and I mean, really, I've not been impressed by what you've shown us so far. But I saw you coming, you know. Did you? You're the one who told me I was doing a bad job and maybe I wasn't fit for this. I could smell bad news from a mile away. Ah, that's what you mean. You're not going to accept that I'm more competent than you and perhaps better suited for the job. You're just going to be blamey. All right. And believe me, you won't teach an old dog new tricks. Huh? Listen, Mr. Chastanet, don't take it this way. I take it as I want to. For 30 years, I've been keeping my nose clean. I've been bowing my head. All for what? Well... He stares into emptiness, as if he had lost his train of thoughts. I mean, it's a hard blow, but I, I can't really feel bad for him. He hasn't been a good director. Yes. He pours himself another one. What was I saying? Something like, 30 years I've been bowing my head, I think. Well, yes. Soon you'll be in my shoes, and you'll understand the weight of the administration. Maybe, but I'll do better at dealing with my teachers and dealing with the parents. I won't let them run all over me. I should have seen it coming. All these stories with the deleteres and the Malfoys. It's nothing to do with that, you weirdo. And now, with Sophie back in the village. What, my, my mom didn't get me this promotion. Did she? Oh my gosh, what if she did? That would be horrible. No, I want, I want Daphne to get this promotion because she deserves it. We used to be friends, you know, Sophie and I. Well, I mean, Mrs. Delator, when we were young. We had a blast, you know? Yeah? Really? Well, yeah, sure, but it was before she became infatuated with Yves Maltera. Aha! Yves Maltera is my dad, isn't he? Which means it's a good thing we didn't do anything with Stanislaw, because he's going to end up being our half-brother. I knew it would end up badly. I saw it coming, and that is why Clotilde hates us. Sorry, Yves Maltair and my mother? Ah, oh, you didn't know? I, I did not. They acted a lot like they really, really hated each other the other day. But this could explain a lot of things. He looks through the window with wet eyes. Two times. Two times I fall for it. All thanks to your damned family. What? You know, I was a teacher once. Physical education. Well, we used to call it gym back then. Yeah, I was called a gym too. I hope you won't forget me when you'll be behind this desk. What are you saying? You want me to hire you as the gym teacher? He did get what he deserved, but I don't really feel... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to take... Sometimes I feel spiteful, sometimes not so much. He got what he deserved, but it's happening. It's pretty much a done thing, and I don't think it's going to be helpful to... I mean, he knows. He already knows. He's feeling despairing, and I don't really want to kick him while he's down. Um, I do want to know what happened between you and my mother. I, it's not that I don't want to kick him while he's down because I feel bad for him or I'm worried about making him feel worse. Because I don't. 
but it's more that I think this is the kind of... It's just not a desire, I feel, at this point. More like, okay, I'm ready to just be done with this guy. Move past him. Except he's got this information, so I would like to know this. My career, my life's work is about to be taken from me. And all you have to say is this? Yeah, actually. Yeah. You're the one who fumbled it, buddy. He bursts into tears. Oh, boy. I don't know what to do. I don't. I, I crumble in the face of tears. Anytime someone starts crying, then suddenly I just feel awful. I think it's because I'm not much of a crier, so if someone cries, then I, I just assume it's going to be, like, I only cry if something's really upsetting me, and so I assume that it must be that they're really hurting for there to be tears, and then, ah, don't cry. Out of my office. Alright, well, what did you, what did he really expect me to say? What did he expect? He gave me bad reviews, made it sound like I was going to be kicked out, and then instead I'm being offered his position. Like, what, did he think we were going to be some kind of allies here? We've not really been friends right along. But, no, Daphne, it's not a time for but. Just leave the guy alone. Yes, I would like to. Go ask Mom about what happened between her and Eves. Leave this guy be. I command you to leave. Leave me alone. We, we really should. The poor man is a sore sight. I leave the room in silence. I don't have the heart to kick a man when he's down. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty well broken here. He's lost everything, so we don't need, really need to rub any salt in this wound. I'm looking forward to the evening to have a little talk with Mom. It's going to be a long day. All right, what does Mom have to say about this? When I get home, Mom is preparing dinner in the kitchen. She watches me enter and probably feels that I have something on my heart. So, Mom, about you and Eve's Maltaire... Daphne, are you all right? You're pulling a face. We have to talk, Mom. I talked to Chastanay today. Ah, something wrong at work? No, actually, things are awesome at work, which is, is really a very nice turn of events. I wasn't expecting that. I thought he was going to end up getting his kicked out. I thought the inspector was all going to be like, nope, you got to go, and it was going to be really upsetting. No, I'm very excited that work's working out for her. Let's say he heard about my promotion and didn't take it very well. Huh? But that's not what I wanted to talk about. Chesterton was half drunk, and he let out something. About a story between you and Eve Smaltaire before you left? Care to explain? There's an awkward silence. Mom dries her hands on the towel and takes a deep breath. I knew this story would resurface sooner or later. This face she's making. Oh boy, cat's out of the bag. But again, Mom. If you wanted to do really any kind of damage control, and if you really wanted to have me understand things, then you should have just talked to me about it a long time ago. And it didn't occur to you that, I don't know, I might want to hear it from you? Rather than from Jean Chastinet, of all people. I'm sorry, Daphne. When I arrived at the castle, there was so much to tell you. I told myself it could wait, that there was no emergency. Well, the better informed I am, the better I'm going to be able to navigate things here, so... How about with it? And then you had your accident, and weeks went by, and then the holidays, and then you went back to work. I couldn't find the right moment. But I swear, this time I'll tell you everything. First things first. Yeah, let's get right out, right into it. Is Yves Maltaire my father? Because you really should let me know who my father is if it's someone from the village, because everyone else probably knows. Great gods, no. Oh, I was totally wrong. Aw. Well, then who is? But I must confess, we had somewhat of a youthful flirt, Eves and I. As you must guess, he was different back then. He wasn't the man he's become. We both wanted to be free from the prison of our families. Oh, what, so you're saying he was somewhat like Stan when he was younger? Doesn't want to shoulder the family burden? Your grandmother, Adelaide had a hard time accepting it at first, but she quickly realized that any alliance might put an end to our old quarrel. Yeah. For the Maltairs, it was just scandalous. Maltairs there getting mixed up with a Delator? They doubled up in their efforts and ingenuity to break us up, and they succeeded. Eves broke my heart, and all our plans went down the drain. Oh, that's actually pretty sad that it didn't work out for you guys. Might could have averted a bunch of nonsense that we've had to deal with since, huh? What happened next? 
took me a couple of months to get myself together. I did, I must admit, things I'm not proud of during that time. What, did you put a curse on anybody? I wanted to wound Eves as much as he had wounded me. I had my share of one-night stands. Okay, and that's why she didn't want to tell me who my father was, because it's probably the result of one of that, and she's feeling really embarrassed about it. I wanted him to do something, anything, to open his eyes. He was stupid, I know that now, but we were only 18. And then I got pregnant. Do you know who by? So who's my father? Do you even know? And I don't mean that in an accusatory way. More just, I mean, I understand the story she's saying. He broke her heart. She wanted to get back at him. That certainly seemed a way to. She wasn't cautious about it. She got pregnant. No judgment there. Um, She was young. These things can happen. But I am just curious, like, if there's a way Daphne could know who her father was. I mean, could be good information to know. No, I've never been sure. And it didn't matter. Not to me, neither to your grandmother. It was the tradition. Huh? What tradition? Women have always been at the head of House Delator. Ah, uh, okay. That's a bit of a refreshing change of pace from most of history. Some of our ancestors took partners, like your grandmother, but most of them remained single or had several lovers during their lives. The fact that there was no father was somehow in our ways. The only thing I'm sure about is that it's not Eve's. All right, well, that's probably for the best. And then, is it your pregnancy that made you leave the village? It doesn't sound like, because she just said that it didn't seem to really be an issue. Delator women just not settling down and having multiple lovers is kind of the norm, and I'd imagine most people sort of expect it, so that can't be it. In a way. Well, how so? Mom hesitates to talk. I feel like I'm getting to the heart of the problem. Mom, I have to know. I feel like there's something very important that's left unsaid about my birth. It can't go on any longer. Do you understand? She looks at me, overwhelmed. I'm very conscious we're about to dig out something. Something she tried to bury, to, for to forget, to bury deeply during all these years. Just let it out. It'll be better if we just get it out and it's not this secret weighing down on you anymore. It's not the pregnancy that pushed me to leave. It's the death of the baby. What? Huh? I feel a shiver running down my spine. Oh my god, I was a twin, wasn't I? It brings me back to something I went through myself only a year ago. Is that why we saw the reflection in the lake? We had a twin? But, yeah, that is... This is it. Now, see... This makes me feel for him. And again, not, I'm not meaning this in a blamey way, but it's more just tragic. So Daphne went through this miscarriage, and it, it hurt her very, very badly. And if she'd known that her mom went through the same thing, maybe there could have been a bit of connection between the two of them, and they could have been a comfort to each other dealing with that grief. But instead, she never knew, because her mom just always kept this a secret. So it's, it's just kind of sad that it worked out that way. Do you mean... Did you lose a child before having me? I don't get it. I was expecting twins. Uh-huh. I've lost your twin sister, Daphne, and it's Yves Maltaire's fault. What did he do? My head is spinning. That would be a rather shocking thing, to know that you would have had a twin, and instead she's been an only child. Like, what it? I don't know, it's just a strange thing to have to wrap your head around. I tell her I need to go to the bathroom, but in truth, I go spend a minute alone in the living room. I need a cigarette. And it's fair that she needs some time to process this, but Daphne, I really want to know how Yves Maltaire is the one to blame for the baby dying. A twin sister? How could she hide it from me all those years? I And I would be kind of upset about that. Like, that does seem like something that she should have been entitled to know. And the fact that she lost her, it's a lot to process. When I get back to the kitchen, Mom is at the window, smoking a cigarette herself. How could you hide this from me, this sister, for all these years? I mean, I guess, and I can kind of understand from the Mom's position, too. Like, it's a painful thing, she probably didn't want to talk about it, and thought maybe it would be easier just to never, never mention it to Daphne. But, I don't know, I guess I really can see both sides of that issue. That'd be a tough call to make whether to tell the surviving child or not. I mean, if you tell him 
Is it just going to be a sad story for them that will always leave them wondering what if the sister had lived? Or is it, are they going to feel better knowing the truth? It's, it's, it's a hard call. She looks at me sadly, with deep melancholy. What would it have changed? I mean, it's, it's a fair question. Besides, how can you blame me for keeping it from me when you went your, through yourself through the same thing? I mean, that's true, Daphne. You are... You know how badly it hurts. You don't understand why she wouldn't want to talk about it. Oh, don't look at me like that. I talked with Frank before he left. He told me about the baby you lost. It's been our curse for more than a century. Ever since the Maltairs offer our children in sacrifice. What? How do they offer our children in sacrifice? There's no way Eves could have sacrificed my baby. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's impossible. I didn't even know who he was. He didn't know I existed. But it's impossible. You can't cause a miscarriage with... With what, anyway? A magic ritual? This is making me think of, um... The first book from, uh... Nightwatch. I forgot who's the author. I know, I know. It's a it's a Russian author. It's a really good series, but yeah. Miscarriage caused with a magic ritual. Um, but anyhow, it's the only explanation. It is not the only explanation. Our, okay, I I kind of understand. She grew up steeped in all this mysticism in the village, right? And with this deep hatred between the Maltairs and the Delators, and this apparently there's a legend about a curse that the Delator children die, but. I mean, come on, Mom. It's not, it's far from the only explanation. Much as they suck, as sad and tragic as they are, miscarriages are a thing that happen. They're, they're not really uncommon. So there's definitely another explanation. Each generation of Maltairs pledges to offer the firstborn of the Dalators. But how could they, it's... How? How would they offer it? Cursing us? No. That's how they took over the village and keep it in their power. Generation after generation, they weaken our bloodline. Your grandmother was sure that because you survived and were, in fact, the firstborn, you would be the one who would break the circle. Um, I'm gonna break it by not buying into any of this crazy curse stuff. I'm just gonna live my life. Be the school director. That's why I left. I didn't want her to take part in your education. She would have put this burden on your shoulders. All right. Okay, I mean, that's fair that she wanted to get away from it. And I'm glad that it worked out. And we've been raised very rational and scientifically minded. Uh, it would have been kind of nice. Well, I, it would have been nice to know it before, but it's such a, an outrageous story for her to have told when we were younger. But still, it seems like she could have found kind of age-appropriate ways and discussed it with us as we grew up. She could have made an ally out of us. So we could understand. I mean, really, that's what she could do. She could say, your grandma holds some very, very backward beliefs. She thinks magic is a real thing, and she wants you to somehow break some sort of curse. It's ridiculous. And I really don't want you to, to feel any kind of expectation about that and get mixed up with that, because it's crazy. That's what she could have said, and that would there you go. Problem solved. Averted a whole lot of trouble. I mean, then we wouldn't have an interesting story here. And I can understand, I guess, why she maybe tried to just hide things and hoped it would all go away, but... I guess, to be fair, the better way to say it is she did not do things the way I obviously would have. Besides, she was wrong. As you said, you didn't show any magical power, after all. Anyway, life goes on. I know what you went through must have been hard, but if I could overcome this, I'm sure you can do it, too. We look at each other. That's when Mom understands. She finally understands this, this truth. I can't say out loud. Not without collapsing. There won't be other children. Oh. Oh, it was... I open my mouth, but words don't come out. Don't say anything, Daphne. I understand. Oh. We stay there in silence. What else is there to say? I mean, there's not really. It's... 
it's not the end of the world. There's always, if she really wants children, there's other options. Being director of a school is kind of an option. In a way, she'll be, you know, a sort of kind authority figure to a bunch of kids. Um, she could always join. Well, they're in France. I don't know if they have the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, but something similar, if there is such a thing. She could look into adoption, foster care. Um, but obviously, it's still something that's sad and that she needs to grieve. So you can't really, I think at this moment, it wouldn't be helpful to say, well, you can still do all these other things. When she's past it a bit, when she's feeling a little better and it doesn't hurt so much, when it's not such a fresh wound, then she could investigate those options. But yeah, at this point, probably just a bit of sorrowful silence together is the best thing. If it's true, that means Yves Maltaire is responsible for the death of my sister. Maybe for the death of my child. Maybe even for... I don't know what to believe. I We're not going to believe it's true, Daphne. I think about Mrs. Levesque, and I'm engulfed by doubt. You did not curse her. It's not your fault. You just pretend cursed her. I know. I know I've been passive. I know I have to act. But what are you going to do? This time, I'm very angry. Between my mother keeping things from me and the Maltaires who spend their time doing what, anyway? Spreading lies? Or can there be an ounce of truth behind all this? I mean, maybe. Maybe. But I'm going to go with more the lies thing and that they are... I mean, they definitely are using all of this superstitious rumors and mysticism to their advantage to hold sway in the village because people are afraid and think they're going to be cursed if they don't. So, I don't know. I am... Do I want to be spiteful and close up the tower and not let him deal with it? I'm feeling better now that we had this talk with Mom. It was pretty important. I don't know what to think anymore. I could confront Eves immediately. I've waited long enough. If he can destroy a life like that by snapping his fingers, someone has to stop him. What are you going to say to him? You killed my baby when you didn't even know I existed? No. But is it really a good idea to blindly go ahead? No. Then there's also Celine Maltaire. I know she, Eves and she are close, at least at work. She might have information about what Eves is planning. But she really doesn't like us right now. I don't know her that much, but maybe she'll agree to help me. What should I do? Oh boy. Well, I think talking to Eves would be disastrous, so I don't think talking to Selene is really a good idea either, but we're going to do it. I go to the city hall at dawn the following day, and we need to be apologetic to her after last time. We got to de-escalate things. The receptionist gives me directions, and I embark on a complicated treasure hunt. I end up entering a large office where I find an agitated Selene, the handset of the phone in her hand. There's a box in a corner of the room, filled with some folders and a picture of Pierre Yves thrown inside quickly. Selene seems lost in her thought, indecisive. I call out to her several times before she realizes I'm there. Wait, a box in the corner with things thrown in? Is she... Is she leaving her office? She stares at me, surprised. Daphne? I mean, things didn't... went really badly the last time we could talk. I could... we talked. I could see her being like, why are you even talking to me now? I've been trying to call you for, like, ten minutes. Really? Oh. She's looking at me, surprised. But what are you doing here? Well, why were you trying to call me? You might find it weird, since we saw each other only once at the cocktail. No, we saw each other after that. It went badly. But I need your help. I know your father is preparing something against my family. I don't know who to turn to. I was just trying to call you. I realized how wrong I was. Oh? Huh? I've been living in the shadow of my father for years, ever since my husband died. Oh, I'm not deaf. I hear what they say in the village. Daddy always told me to let them talk. That it was good for business, all these local superstitions. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's really a good thing to be feared. That I shouldn't worry about any of this. After what I've witnessed yesterday, I can no longer look the other way. Um, no, we don't need to be snotty with her. I understand. It's hard to accept that someone so close is hiding things from us. 
What did you witness yesterday? Yes, you must be right. She smiles faintly. You must realize all these stories are unbelievable, right? What happened to make you suddenly believe in all this? Yesterday I spent the evening at my parents'. My father excused himself at dessert, pretexting an urgent file to work on. I offered him my help, of course, but he refused, so I stayed in the kitchen to chat with Mom for a while. Pierre Eves went to play in the living room, and something like ten minutes later he came back running into the kitchen. He was in tears. He wouldn't calm down, and I didn't understand what had put him in that state. He was pointing his finger towards the door of the basement. When I decided to go check, Mom tried to prevent me, but of course, I went anyway. Well, yeah, if something was shocking enough, sixth grade is, what, about 12 years old? If something freaked out your 12-year-old enough that he's, like, crying, then, yeah, I would want to know why. If my son... Her voice breaks down. She seems to make an effort to keep her calm. So I went down to the basement. I heard the voice of my father. He was speaking to someone. Who was in the basement with him? When I entered the room, I saw, I don't know, a kind of shadow? Seconds later, the shadow had disappeared, and I then realized Dad was holding a long knife. There were candles all over the floor, and strange drawings. Oh, wow. I ran upstairs, took Pierre Eves in my arms, and left without looking back. Okay, so you're... Yeah, your dad's dabbling in some kind of dark magic, huh? Couldn't sleep that night. This morning, I dropped Pierre Eves at school, and I took my phone to call you. Because yesterday, I heard my father whisper Sophie Delator several times as I was going down the stairs. He's cursing my mom? All right. I don't want to buy into any of this. I want to take the whole scientific road, and this is impossible, but... I mean, she, she's telling me she saw him talking to some kind of shadow, like someone else was there. I mean, at the very least, we know from this story that her dad was attempting to curse our mom. Alright, things are getting a little crazy here. There's a long moment of silence. Selene looks upset. Well, I mean, I'd be upset too if I found my father conversing with some kind of dark shadow and performing a dark magic ritual. It must be nothing, but I would be more at ease if you warned your mother, Daphne. I'm afraid for her. Oh, I will. I will. Yep. Mmm. I have just enough superstition in me that I can't just... No need to panic. No, we're gonna call her. You're right. Can I borrow your phone? I ring Mom's mobile. Answering machine. Uh-oh. I try the landline at the castle. No answer. That's when I begin to panic. I call the Bortines. Gerard picks up. I ask him to go check at the castle, see if everything is in order. Selene is white as a sheet. Listen, Selene, it must be nothing, but I can't reach Mom. I'll go back to the castle. Yes, of course. What are you waiting for? Ah, uh, thank you. Selene, thank you so much. I'm sure it must have been hard for you. But yeah, she is. She is. It freaked her out enough. That's what the box is. She's packing up her stuff, and she is getting out. Good for her. Good for her that she saw something like that. It creeped her out, and she said, you know what? Done. Getting my son out of here. She's being a good mom. She smiles faintly. Don't thank me. I feel so stupid. I know I chose the path of least resistance. After my husband died, I was lost. No, I, seriously, I can't hold it against you. I mean, who would blame her? Her husband died. It's a huge tragedy. She's got this kid. She's got to try and make it through just her and the boy, and then if her family is there willing to back her up, I mean, yeah. It'd be the logical place to turn for help. I had no job. We were about to move, and there was Pierre Eves. I was a widow looking for work with a toddler. Yeah, it would, it would be hard. When Daddy offered me to work for him, I agreed, and every time something weird was happening in the village, I looked the other way. I, I really don't blame you. He always had an explanation anyway, every single time. I couldn't resolve myself to give credit to these superstitions. Hey, same boat, Selene, same boat. It would have meant that my own father was probably responsible for the accident that had killed my husband. Ugh. But it can't go on. I can't convince myself that all is for the best any longer. 
I mean, even if we don't necessarily believe that he's managing to contact dark spirits, maybe she just saw a trick of, of the lighting in the basement or something. I mean, he is, at the least we know, attempting these rituals, so that would be enough for me. I understand. Oh, and if you need anything, you know where to find me, okay? Thank you, Daphne. I might take you up on your word. You know, she's pretty reasonable now. I almost kind of wish we'd made more of an effort to befriend her earlier. I hug her, then I run to my car. All right, let's go find our mom. <gasps> I see smoke over the treetops, even before, re before reaching the path to the castle. Don't burn all the books in the... Oh my gosh, what if everything in the tower burns down? <gasps> I know the mom's the more important thing here, but... Oh, don't lose all of that priceless, irreplaceable historical information. Oh, boy. When I get to the courtyard, I discover Mr. Bortine in shock, surrounded by a squadron of firefighters. Guys, what is going on? Ah, oh, Miss Daphne. Chance you called me so quickly. What happened? I found your mother unconscious in her room. There was smoke everywhere. If you hadn't warned me, I'd rather not think about it. Does that mean she's okay, then? The ambulance has just left. The nurse told me she was very lucky. Oh, thank goodness. Do you know how the fire started? Oh, miss, it's probably my fault. Your mother must have wanted to light the fireplace in her room. The chimney hasn't been swept for ages. Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault, Mr. Bortine. Besides, if you hadn't been there to save her... Yeah, you're, you're a hero in all this. Thank you. A fireman gets close to us. Are you the new owner? I am? Yes. Hello, madam. Captain Riviere. Your mother was very lucky Gerard got to her so fast. It was not very smart of him to run into the house like that, but it's probably thanks to him that she's alive. He's... You know, I, I'm quite liking the Bortines. Well, otherwise we got to the origin of the fire. You got lucky there, too. It was just a chimney fire. There's no structural damage, but you'll have to refresh some of the wallpapers. Okay, thank goodness, because also if, if anything happened to the castle, you know, that's a historical treasure, too. Whew. Okay, so. The papers are probably... We do need to check the tower, though, to make sure that... Eves didn't try to, like, pop by and steal a bunch of stuff or something. I am kind of worried about the people that just randomly show up in our house. We need to get better locks for our doors, Daphne. Thank you so much, Captain. Do you know where my mother's been sent? We might be a small town, but we still have a small emergency center. At least for now. You'll find her there. I spend the evening at the hospital. The doctors tell me they're doing all they can, that Mom isn't out of the woods yet, and that her chances are not that good. Oh, no, no! I wait anxiously in the waiting room, hoping she'll regain consciousness, hoping the doctors will tell me I can see her, and hoping they'll say, at last, that she's going to be all right. As I've just fallen asleep, curled up on a chair in the waiting room, a man in a white coat wakes me up gently. Mom is woken up. She's weak, but she's alive. The doctors have decided to keep her under observation for a couple of days. Okay, that's good. That's good. It would be so horrible if we just managed to get past our estrangement and reconnect with her some. We've got this tentative relationship building, and then for her to die in this horrible accident. Like, oh, I don't know what to think. If Selene hadn't warned me, my mother would have died asphyxiated for sure. Yeah, I'm, thank you, Selene. That worked out for the best. Can I really believe it's just a coincidence? Uh, we can, but maybe we should tread a little carefully. I go home in a state of shock. Days pass me by in a daze. I've lost the notion of time. We're not neglecting our duties at school, are we? Is it Wednesday? Thursday? I don't know. Not anymore. Getting my mother back and just almost lose her again so suddenly? Is Eve Smaltair really responsible for her accident? Is all this nothing but a cosmic curse that would keep pursuing me? Since I lost the baby, the inheritance, moving in, I'm lost. I hear the doorbell. Someone's at the door. Is it Eves who comes to torment me? Well, let's go check. I don't have the strength to get up, even less to go answer the door. No, you gotta, because otherwise they're just gonna waltz right in, whoever it is. I'm waiting for someone to answer. I call Mrs. Bortine. No sign. Has she gone back home? The doorbell rings again. I wriggle out of the sofa and go to the entry hall. I hesitate again for a second. Then I gather my strength and open the front door. 
All right, who have we got? There's a middle-aged man on the other side of the door. I don't recognize you. If his overall look and the smell of cold tobacco weren't saying enough about his political views, the red scarf doesn't leave any doubt. Hmm? Hello, Daphne. I'm Jean-Pierre Tavernier. Or something along those lines. Yes? I'm coming in the name of the workers of the sawmill. What? what? Do you have a minute? I... I guess? I'm really confused. I don't know who you are, and I don't know what the political views mean, so, um... Okay. Yeah, sure. What can I do for you? I just wanted to give you this. What? He puts a big bouquet of flowers into my arms. Huh? When we heard about your mother, we all chipped in. Oh, oh, thank you. That's really sweet. We wanted to show our support. The Maltairs have been exploiting us for years, and we feel that's enough. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I kind of understand, and I've had enough, too. Not the, the magic part of it. I, this is not me agreeing about the magic part of it, but more that the way they've been holding sway over people with their superstitions. They are exploiting people, and it's pretty crappy. So, fine. Let's stand up to them. Maybe us just saying that will give him some hope, and maybe lessen a bit of their superstition. Who knows? I understand. I've been here for only a few months, and I already have it up to there. I knew we'd see eye to eye, you and I. You're a teacher, after all. Yeah. What do you mean, though? I mean, I am a teacher, but, like, why does that... You're a civil servant. You must be for the fair sharing of the wealth, right? Well... Well, I'm not here to talk about politics, but if you ever want to, I'm your man. I know people from the village didn't welcome you warmly when you arrived. No, they sure didn't. And then, I must confess, neither did I. With your castle and everything, I thought you were on the oppressor's side. I realize I've misjudged you. I'm not on oppressors or liberators or anybody's side. I just want to I just want to live in a nice little village in my castle and be friends with people. Have a good life. That's all I'm looking for. All this to say that you have friends at the sawmill. Well, that's, I mean, that's probably a good thing. It's good to know. We've all had enough of the Meltairs and their schemes. That's nice. Thank you. So, that's it. I won't keep you any longer. The workers of the sawmill are behind you, and in the village, the wind of change is blowing, too. Well, it's good to hear. We're going to stand up, and the people will be freed from the shackles of the tyrants. That seems a little bit over the top, but all right. Sorry, see, I'm already getting worked up, and it's not even the big night. What, what, what do you mean, big night? What big night? Will you change the water? Of the flowers. It's important, you know. Well, yeah, I want them to last as long as they can. Oh, yes, sure. Okay, I'll get out of your hair now. Have a good day, comrade. Oh, boy. He gets back to his car, opens the door, and, before getting behind the wheel, he turns back to me and lifts his left fist. Then he speeds away and disappears in the bend. I must admit, I didn't see this one coming. <laughs> That's surely right. <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure what's going on. Is he... I don't know. All I know about, like, Red and the oppressors of the... Is, is he communist or something? I don't I don't know what this means. Or maybe it's some sort of, like, workers' party, but I don't know. It's... I don't know. I'm American. We have, we have Democrats and Republicans, and that's pretty well it. I mean, there's some side parties, but none of them hold the kind of sway the main two do. Um, I, yeah, I don't really know <laughs> what this guy's talking about. All I hope is that I won't get up one morning to find a battalion of strikers setting up a coffee sausages barbecue in the courtyard. <laughs> the rest of the week pass passes me by like lightning. I spend my days working at school, then rushing to the hospital to be at my mother's bedside. I know he won't stop at this. Mr. Borsine went inside the wing to evaluate the damage. We've been lucky. A fresh coat of paint, new curtains, and, he assured me, it would be as good as new. The couple of wardens has been particularly affected by the accident. Mr. Bortine looks even more impenetrable than usual. While they're probably feeling as though they've almost been assaulted in their own home, I still think it was just a chimney fire that happened, but, you know. Well, he did say that it was his own fault for not clear. So either he's feeling extremely guilty that it was his own fault, or he's thinking this was an attack by the Maltairs and he's feeling determined to defend his home. We'll see. 
As for Mrs. Bertine, she got very discreet, and I doubt she's left the outbuilding much for the last few days. Oh, no, you guys don't have to, like, hide from me or anything. We should go visit her and see if she's okay. But what surprised me the most are the messages of support from the village. Really? I didn't realize that on the heels of Jean-Pierre Tavernier, so many people would reach out to us with their regards and their support. That's why, when Mom finally gets out of the hospital, I'm only half surprised to see a small reception committee waiting for us in the courtyard. Wow. They really like her. We look at each other, Mom and I, and I feel she's deeply moved by this attention. Since she's still too weak to stay outside in the cold, I bring her to the door. Then, once she's warmly inside, I turn around to thank everyone for coming. It would be nice to invite them inside. That's when I see a big sedan coming up the alley, then the figure of Yves Maltaire getting out of the car and coming in my direction, and apparently busting through all these well-wishers, and he looks angry. Well, this is awfully rude of him. Once he's next to me, he greets me with a little sardonic smile, then faces the little group. From the corner of my eye, I see Mr. Bortine walking quickly towards the outbuilding. He's going to get his rifle. When I decided to come checking in on Mrs. Delator following her terrible accident, I didn't think I'd interrupt a popular uprising building up in my back. These are just concerned people who are happy she's out of the hospital. You don't have to turn this into a weird thing. Oh, I know why you're here, and that's certainly not to check in on my mother. Really, Daphne, such an unfounded accusation. For his audience, he adds, You know, the rebels usually bring their sticks and pitchforks at the village's square to take by storm the den of the evil queen, not the other way around. What, are you trying to infer that they are come here to hackle me? Not the case. And to be honest, you all have a short memory. How many of you feed their family thanks to the sawmill? And here he is, trying to lord it over people. He points at a man with his finger. You, Mr. Brunel, didn't I lend you some money when you wanted to open your cobbler shop? He turns to someone else. And you, Mrs. Legendre, when your husband died and you couldn't make the ends meet, who found you a place to live? I mean, he has helped a lot of the villagers. He helped Mrs. Levesque as well. A whisper is building in the crowd. All of you, at one time or another, turn to my family for help. Oh boy, I can see his point of view now here too. I mean, his family is kind of pompous and arrogant and rude, but if they have all turned to him and asked him for help, I mean... If they want nothing to do with him, then they've got to actually have nothing to do with him. They can't talk about what a domineering, arrogant guy he is, but then depend on him and ask him for favors at the same time. And now what? Are you stabbing me in the back? Disowning me after all I've done for you? All that to support a stranger? Aziz puts his hand to his forehead, pretending to be profoundly disappointed. Someone yells at him, but she's a delator. A delator. For more than a century, the Delators have wrapped themselves up in their so-called dignity, while it's us, the Maltairs, who did everything to make the village prosper. What's left of their so-called ancient glory? A decaying castle. Oh, and a tower full of secrets, but you don't know that I know what's in there. What have you done for the village, Daphne? Well, I'm listening. What have you done? I am the director of the school. Thanks. Eves gives me a black stare, and I know I'm going to have to choose carefully what to say next. Okay, I really should calm things down. But I want to, he said, what have I personally done? And I want to respond, because I have done something. I was a teacher, and then I've been promoted to director. I have helped the town. I should calm things down, but I'm not gonna. You say that you want to help people, but everyone can see that everything you do, you do for yourself. What's wrong? I did more for the village than the Delators ever did. Then how do you explain that so many of your fellow citizens reach out to me with words of support and friendship, Mr. Mayor? There's a whisper growing around us. I don't... I mean, I think maybe... I think it is good to stand against him, but I would rather have said something more along the lines of... I am a teacher and directly answered his question. This is... Well, I shouldn't have picked argue, and I knew that when I picked it. We're going to start a war here. Well... For the first time, Eves doesn't know what to say. I can't believe this. You must have put a spell on them. I am not a witch. Are you really saying that to me? When you've been taking advantage of these beliefs for years? Yeah. 
Go home, Heaths. You're making a fool of yourself. Ooh, actually, she's handling this pretty well. You think you have power, but as soon as anyone refuses to bow to your rules, thy rules the house of cards collapses by itself. I warn you. I cut him before he can finish his sentence. What are you warning me of? Are you confessing for the fire that sent my mother to the hospital? Yeah, this is... You really want to take credit for that in front of everybody here? Don't push me. You don't know what I'm capable of. You are not making things look good for you, buddy. All the villagers are going to just continue to rally behind me because they're too afraid to stand up to you on their own, but now they think that I'm some kind of witch and I'm standing up to you, so... I mean, if you want to play the game with the superstition, with their beliefs, fine. I'll be the good witch. Alright. Yeah, what are you capable of, huh? What, are you going to put a spell on me? No, I don't. What are you capable of? Tell me. He grumbles something in his beard. Beard? Speak louder. You have the perfect audience. Look, your fellow citizens are hanging on to your every word. He stares at me with a mix of anger and helplessness. Yeah, called your bluff, didn't I? I meet his gaze and we stay here, face to face, for a long while. He finally looks down. And... You know the way out. I'm sorry, but I have to tend to my mother. I feel a little bad... Do I feel... I do. I shouldn't feel bad for him, but I do, a fe I do feel a little bad trying to break this old man. But at the same time, I mean, he's the guy who who drove up here and just busted through this all on his own. People are just being nice that mom got out of the hospital, and he turned it into a confrontation. I turned away, preparing myself to break the crowd that has witnessed the scene, speechless. Well, we've definitely given them a lot of stuff to feed the rumor mill. Someone yells at me to beware. What, is he going to attack me? I don't have time to turn around when I hear the sound of a gunshot. Oh my gosh, who... Eves collapses to my feet, his hand red with blood, holding his right shoulder. Oh my gosh. Mr. Bertine shot him. Mr. Bertine, you can't just shoot people. I'd resolved it. Oh my goodness. A couple of yards away, Mr. Bertine is holding a hunting rifle. You cannot just shoot someone. Oh boy. The barrel is smoking in delicate curls, floating upwards towards the sky. <laughs> he shot. <laughs> He just shot. He has melted. You can't. Oh my! I thought we'd had we had the situation well in hand. All right. I really want to know what's going to happen next, but I don't know how long the epilogue is going to be, and it might make this just a gigantic episode. So we're going to go ahead and wind things down here. As always, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Uh, come back next time. We have to see. I I hope that he didn't kill him. If he, if he killed him, then it's it's murder, and that's going to be trouble. I don't want Mr. Bertine to have to go to prison. But if he didn't kill him, then maybe there can be lesser charges. Maybe, oh boy. Oh boy, what a pickle we're in now. But things are winding up, so I really want to see where this goes.